Well, I didn't think I'd be doing this ever again, but how's it going, Teal Boys? Today, I've got something a little bit different for you. As many of you guys know, and probably from just looking at the title of this video, Marquise Jackson and Radon Randell were absolutely legendary for us while at Coastal Carolina. At the end of our final season, Marquise was a senior, so he was going to go in the draft no matter what. But Radon, a redshirt sophomore, decided to declare early. Both of them were 97 overall, and both of them were projected for the first round. So today, what we're going to do is take a look at the legacy, or a little bit of the legacy of their careers in college football, and then we're going to see what happens with their careers in the NFL. So if we go into the school and NCAA records, we should be able to see some of the big things that they did while they were in college. Now, Grayson McCall uh, still holds the career passing touchdown record for the school and the game passing touchdown record for the school. Uh, but Radon has the passing touchdowns in a season record and passing yards in a game record, both in that final year for Coastal. 41 touchdowns in that final season with 505 yards in a single game. In the receiving department, it's Marquise Jackson with three records, receiving yards in a career, game, and season. 3,408 yards in his career. He had a high game of a 269, and in the final season alone, set a record of 1,353 receiving yards. Not only do they hold a bunch of Coastal Carolina records, but they also hold some NCAA-wide records as well. The first one for Marquise is a little bit broken. He has the longest fumble return in NCAA history uh, at 132, and that's just a glitch in the game. That's what happens when you return a uh, missed field goal for a touchdown and then return another one. I think theoretically you could have this record be as high as you could possibly get it, as many returns as you could return to the house in a row in one game. Uh, but for me, the highest I've ever gotten it is like to 206. The real record that Marquise does have, though, is the longest kick return, sitting at 106 yards. That is so deep into the end zone to decide to bring it out, and then to go ahead and take it to the house is something else. Radon also found his way into the record books with the individual season QB rating record at 210. Uh, this isn't the standard QB rating that they use like in the NFL today, but that is still very impressive. And although they don't keep track of this as a record in the game, I would be fairly confident in betting that Marquise holds the record for most kick returns in a career and probably also most punt returns in a career, uh, as well as most uh, field goal returns in a career. Absolutely the best returner that the world has ever seen. So both guys decided to declare in this draft uh, they went with a bunch of other good players, so we can kind of see uh, what some of those guys do throughout their careers. Um, but both of them, 97 overall. Again, Marquise, a redshirt senior, and Radon, a redshirt sophomore. Them, along with John Taylor, all three projected for the first round. So I have saved the draft class from every season of this Teal Boys Dynasty, just in case. So what we are going to do is import that draft class into Madden 25 and see where they get drafted and how their careers turn out in the NFL. Uh, one of them could be a bust. They both could be bust. They both could be stars. I'm hoping that they both make it to the Hall of Fame. So here we are now in Madden 25. I've created a franchise and gone through the preseason and loaded in our draft class that includes our guys. And one thing that's weird is, I don't know what team it is, but some team has decided to move to Mexico City. So I guess we'll figure out what that is. Uh, and now let's just see, this is the first chance that you have when you get to week two of your first season to see uh, where your players are going to be rated uh, and what position on the draft board they're going to be at. So we'll see how good of a player Potentially our two guys, Radon and Marquise, could be. Uh, okay, Radon, third overall projected first round, third pick. 
And uh, he's behind a quarterback from Michigan, Tyree Edwards. There's a lot of quarterbacks around him. That could be interesting. And there's Marquise Jackson, projected seventh overall pick. Uh, if you do look, it says the college is New Mexico State. And that's because the college football revamp team uh, replaced New Mexico State with Coastal Carolina. So anytime you see New Mexico State, you just got to think Coastal. So uh, we don't have a lot of information about them right now. They're not great for their size. Production is good for Radon, though. 99 there, but a 94 in a side. And uh, Marquise is just a 73 on the size. I don't know if we have anything else. We have their ages and uh, if they have the predictable or the clutch trait. I think this is just a one or a zero. There's a lot of things like this in uh, this game. But uh, what we're going to do is sim basically to the end of this season so that we can build up enough scouting points to take an in-depth look at their skills uh, and see where they've transferred to in this game. And then we'll see where they get drafted. So we've made it to the end of this first season. And one thing that's going to be important to remember throughout this entire little experiment is that we are starting this from the 2013 version of the NFL. So, you know, coaches are different. Rosters are different. Players are different. And we might see some interesting scenarios because of that. Uh, now, the Super Bowl in this first season was won by the Patriots. They were able to beat the Niners like 40-something to 30-something. But that doesn't matter. What matters is taking a look at our guys. Radon Randell here. Uh, well, we're just going to take a look at a lot of the stuff. We won't look at the actual numbers, but we'll look at the grade. He's got an A overall, which is good news for us. Um, player type, he's a, yeah, we already know that. He's a mobile quarterback. He's got B durability, B physicality. Uh, how's his speed? A B on speed and a B on acceleration. Just a lot of Bs right now. Strength, a D. Yeah, I guess we don't expect that to be too crazy. All right, how about the passing stats? Awareness is a B. Throw accuracy is a B. Throw accuracy mids a B. Throw on the run is a B. Throw power itself is a B. Is everything just going to be a B? Throw accuracy short. B. Throw accuracy deep. B. Play action. B. Stiff arm is an F. This is ridiculous. Does he have any A's at all? Injuries an A. Stamina's a B. And then we kind of get to the uh, intangibles and skills. So we'll see what he has here. Personality wise, he's got an F, which is kind of interesting. In my mind, I didn't think of Radon as being a guy that would have a bad personality, but... I guess that's not something we could know. How about his development? His development's average. So we get nothing that's too crazy. He has one consistency. And again, I feel like that's a zero or a one. Just a binary thing. So I think that's good. Confidence is a zero. So he's not confident. He has a terrible personality. He is predictable. I don't know what the, exactly that's trying to say. He is not clutch. He's got ideal force pass, which is good. Uh, he does have some sort of cover ball. He does have a tight spiral. He does have the ability to throw it away. Some ability to tuck and run and ideal uh, sack pressure or something like that. It's just kind of weird all over the place. And you know, we actually have a lot of ex uh, scouting points that we can use. So let's just see what his actual overall is. That's pretty dang good. He's a 93 overall quarterback uh, at the age of 21. Well, that is impressive. Hopefully, he gets picked up by a decent team. I didn't pay attention at all to what team did what through this season. So, uh, you know, he could be going to something like the Lions or, I mean, these days, Bengals, Browns. You know how it is. Or maybe something crazy happened and one team had a bad season. He could be going somewhere good. But in general, it seems like he will be a decent player. The question now is Marquise. He's projected as the seventh overall pick. He's got a B overall, not an A, so probably in the 80s. Um, player type, they say he's a balanced receiver. I don't know if I'd agree with that. I would almost call him more of like a speed receiver. That's how we used him at least, but we'll see what his speed and acceleration are in the game. Physical wise, he's got a C. He's got B intangibles. And these are the ones that are important for him. His speed is an A and his acceleration is an A. He's got B agility, C jumping. You don't really like to see that. And then his catching set. Catching is a B. Spectacular catch is a B. Catch and traffic is a B. Route running is an A, so that's good for him. Uh, 
but the release is just a B, so it's just kind of all over the place. Decent carrying, um, but really, oh, his kick return? Yeah, it's got to be an A, 96. You would expect that for one of college football's greatest ever return, man, if not the greatest ever. Uh, B on his stamina and an F on his toughness is pretty rough. And then again, back to these uh, intangible and personality traits and all that sort of stuff. So Radon had an F personality. <laughs> Marquis also with an F personality. Does he have any confidence? No. Average development, relatively consistent, not clutch, uh, but he's got predictability. He doesn't have dropped passes, so I think that might mean that he does drop a lot of passes. He does have the catch and bounds, no high mo motor, no fight for the yards, and no cover ball. I gotta be honest, that's not looking too good for Marquis. Uh, what is his overall? He's an 81. Ooh, that is pretty rough. I was expecting it to be like mid to high 80s. I wouldn't be surprised if he falls, you know, late into the first round. Now, there are a few other players from Coastal in this draft class. We'll take a look at where they get drafted, but we won't necessarily watch their career. Our backup quarterback, David Williams, is projected to be the third pick of the third round. Our defensive tackle, John Taylor. It's projected to be the 16th pick of the fourth round. Another one of our wide receivers, Malcolm Williams, is projected to be the 21st pick of the fifth round. And just past him is Kale Mackey, expected to be the 25th pick of the fifth round. And the original Durham Finch is projected to be the last guy drafted uh, from Coastal. He's projected for the 16th pick of the sixth round. Now that we've had a look at all of our guys, Let's go ahead and see where they get drafted. We'll just go ahead and start this draft. And uh, for the first couple picks, we'll see where people go. Obviously, I won't be drafting or doing anything for the 49ers. I just had to pick a coach. So why not pick uh, Jim Harbaugh and my favorite team? So Oakland has the first pick of this 2013 or 2014 draft. I, I don't know what you would technically consider it. And the uh, first guy that was expected to be picked up was uh, the tight end. Skip Bayless over there saying that he doesn't agree with that. Uh, and then down here, 49ers potentially picking up Marquise. I wouldn't mind that. Let's go ahead and advance the draft just to see where Oakland goes. The first pick of this draft is Radon Randell. So Radon picked first overall. He is a 93 overall quarterback. Unfortunately for him, he's gone to the Raiders, which is, I don't know. I, I'm sure that they'd be a little bit disappointed about that. Okay, well, I guess maybe now we can hope that Marquise will be uh, picked earlier than expected. Cleveland has the second pick, and they're going to take Ty Hogan, another quarterback. Miami with the third pick takes another quarterback. Tampa Bay with the fourth pick takes a tight end. That's the guy who was supposed to go first overall. We're getting towards where Marquise was expected. He was round seven or pick seven, which is Buffalo. He doesn't go to the Cardinals. Will he go to St. Louis? No, they also take a quarterback. There was like six quarterbacks projected for this top 10 picks. So a strong quarterback class. And this is where we would expect to see Marquise go. Yeah, no, they're going to go take a tight end. Could he fall to the Bengals? No. Oh, my gosh. Marquise falling down the board. Daniel Thomas, another quarterback taken by the Jets. The Titans take another quarterback. This is ridiculous. Baltimore, surely. No, they take a tight end. It's been all tight ends and quarterbacks so far. San Diego takes a right guard. St. Louis. Oh, see, we knew when Marquise showed an 81 overall that it was going to be pretty rough. How far? Through this first round, are we going to have to go before he gets picked up? And where could he potentially end up at all? Uh, Dallas with the 18th pick is going to take a quarterback. It's all just falling apart. If you're Marquise Jackson, running backs getting taken in front of him. How about Detroit? The Lions taking a strong safety. The Giants take a left end. Eagles take a free safety. Oh, man. Is he really going to go from being a projected top 10 pick to being somewhere in the second round? That would be devastating for him and potentially for his career. The 49ers, they're going to take Kevin Mitchell, the corner. So that's kind of interesting. 
And it's just not looking good. So <laughs> the entire first round gone. Marquise Jackson still on the board. I wonder, could David Williams be taken before him? Uh, the Raiders still not going for him. Well, I guess we're just going to jump ahead until we see him get picked up. Or I guess we could just do it right there. So Marquise Jackson going the third pick of the second round. And he's going to go to Baltimore, which is a good situation for him. But oh, that's just rough. Certainly, he would have wanted to go sooner, but I, maybe it's better for him to be taken with less expectations and, you know, go to a better team. All right. Well, uh, I will skip forward to each of the remaining Teal Boys to see where they ended up getting picked up. And kind of a surprising twist here. John Taylor has been picked uh, almost a full or over a full round earlier than expected. He's going to Chicago and he is the 14th pick of the third round. Kale Mackey also jumping up over a round. He's also going to go to Chicago. So he gets to play on the same defense with John Taylor. He goes with the 14th pick of the fourth round. David Williams is still on the board. And there goes David Williams. Uh, he's going to go for the Vikings, but the 19th pick of the fourth round, he'll certainly be disappointed in how far he fell, but hopefully... Uh, you know, he gets a chance to develop and become something decent. There goes Durham Finch, the 15th pick of the fifth round. He's going to go to Green Bay. And so that will just leave Malcolm Williams as the final guy to get drafted. He was expected to be picked up here around the 21st pick. So we'll just sim right over to that one and see how accurate that was. It would be pretty crazy. Um, otherwise, I guess we're just going to have to sim forward and see where he gets picked up. Well, uh-oh, uh, it looks like Malcolm might go undrafted. Uh, the team formerly known as the Redskins, or known as the Redskins in this game, has the final pick of this draft. Uh, who knows who they took? Probably not Malcolm. They took uh, outside linebackers, so undrafted for Malcolm Williams. I'm sure he's going to be a little bit disappointed about that. Now for Radon, he signed himself a $7 million contract with a $16 million bonus. Uh, he's got to be pretty happy about that. And then Marquise. Man, that sac second round money is pretty disappointing. $3 million on the salary with a $2.2 .2 million bonus. I'm sure that he wishes he got some more, but that's just what happens when you're not as good as the uh, scouts originally believe you to be. So now that our rookies have been drafted, uh, I'm just going to advance to about midway through this opening season and we'll see how they're doing. All right, we are here uh, at the start of week nine and two things. One, uh, St. Louis, the Rams moved to Mexico to be the Golden Eagles. And two, I just realized that they have been using this exact same team name and logo for this relocation team since at least 2013 all the way through to today that is incredibly lazy man you gotta be kidding me not it's literally the exact same thing so that's a little bit disappointing all right so we're we really care about the raiders and the ravens that's where our two guys are how are they doing uh in the nfl the ravens are sitting at number two they have the best record in the afc so they're going to be hoping to just keep that going. 6-2-0. and oh, And how far down do we have to go to the Raiders? I'm pretty sure they won a couple of games early, but it has not been good since then. Uh, Oakland, 3-4-0. and oh. At least that means that uh, I think Radon should have a couple of wins under his belt. Let's take a look. Uh, uh, well, that kind of makes some sense. Terrell Pryor still getting... A decent amount of the starts. Actually, he's the backup, so Radon is starting. Radon, seven touchdowns to four interceptions, a long of a 79. He's got 1,400 passing yards. His pass rating isn't great. It's down at a 78. Um, anything crazy. He's been sacked 10 times, and he's only throwing it at 56%. But as a rookie, he's doing okay. 200 yards per game. Uh, You know... Maybe put him around a better team or get him some better pieces. Things could get interesting there. How about for the Ravens? Joe Flacco is their quarterback right now. He's having a decent season. Still nine picks. Marquise, 
uh second most amount of receptions so the rookie getting it done 466 yards five touchdowns leads the team in receiving touchdowns uh he's averaging 12 yards a catch you know i love to see it does he have a, a long a long of just 27 so nothing uh incredible yet but just a crazy amount of downs played i'm glad to see that he is getting some reps in on a team that is leading the afc um let's see they're also letting him return kicks 14 kicks returned for 333 yards that's not all that special uh, how about punts? Is he taking those as well? He has taken 32 of them, but his longest is a nine-yard return. So the NFL, a little bit faster paced. Maybe it takes him a little bit to get used to that. Or maybe he's just not going to be a good returner in the NFL. Well, let's sim to the end of this season and see if the Raiders can turn it around and maybe see if Marquise can get a Super Bowl ring in his first season in the NFL. Okay, we are here. End of the regular season. What's happening with the playoffs? Who is going to be making it? Um, well, our our boys haven't done so hot here near the end of the season. Ravens end the year eight and eight, so they're going to be disappointed with that. Uh, what about the Raiders? Six and ten. I mean, six wins with a rookie quarterback at the head of it, and you already weren't a great team since you had the first overall pick. Uh, I don't think they could be too upset with that for the whole nfl let's see where our guy ended up we got to go by yards here because pass rating is obviously a little bit weird i saw tim tebow pretty high up on that list and i don't see raid on right away we're gonna have to keep going down joe flacco uh marquise's quarterback uh, okay raid on ends the season 3200 yards that's not bad his passer rating is 73.5 he did finish positive on his touchdowns to interceptions. 15 passing touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 55% uh, on the season. Not the worst that you could expect. Uh, maybe not the best either. If we just look at receiving, I imagine we'll have to go a ways down to find Marquise Jackson. But, uh, I mean, he's got a lot of talent around to try and beat out. Uh, this is further down than I was expecting to go. This is a team that started pretty hot on the season, but then ended pretty poorly. So Marquise all the way down here. I mean, he's a decent receiver, all things considered for his uh, rookie season. 650 receiving yards, and uh, he didn't get a touchdown the entire second half of the season. Still just with the five on the year and 52 receptions. So either they stopped targeting him or the team just didn't really get there. 991 downs played. Um, maybe he had a little bit of an injury, but the start of his season was definitely better than the end of it. Apparently, Mike Ditka has come back to be a head coach. But uh, from this point on, I think what we're going to do is just sim to the end of each season or each regular season. If our guys are in the playoff, uh, we'll sim to see how far they make it through the playoffs. And, you know, hopefully they can win some Super Bowls, and if not, we'll just see what their stats were and how they may be compared to the rest of the league at their position, and hopefully they stick around for a while. I guess we'll know if this video turns out to be pretty long, but if you hover over the bar and it looks like it's almost over, uh, then terrible things are about to happen to our two guys. Okay, so it's the end of year two. Where did our guys end up? The Ravens will be in the playoffs, and so will the Raiders. 10 or what the 11 and 5 radon just slang in this year doing some work we'll have to see uh what their stats are here i'm not entirely sure how radon uh led his team where he did 11 and 5 is an impressive record because he's a ways down here 74.9 pass rating i think is a little bit higher 3400 yards so he threw for a couple hundred more uh, and more touchdowns, but 14 interceptions. 20 to 14 there is pretty rough. And just a long of 33. So short passes all season long for the Raiders has been enough to make a massive improvement. 60%. Uh, so he passed at a higher completion percentage this season as compared to last season. So that's not too bad for him. How about receiving? I'm not even going to bother looking at the full NFL. We'll just go straight to the Ravens and find... 
uh, Marquise to see what he's doing. He's the third leading receiver. We'll go by yards here because that just makes more sense than receptions. But yeah, still third. 55 catches for 663 yards uh, and two touchdowns. What's his long on the year? Just a 27-yarder. So just again, not anything crazy. He did play more downs this year. And he's off to a decent start on his career. Seven touchdowns in two years for receivers. Not bad at all. But I'm sure that you would like to have a little bit more than that. What did Radon do running the ball? Uh, <laughs> I mean, he got sacked 21 times. So that definitely takes away from it. But he did run for almost 100 yards on 48 attempts. I guess if you count each sack as an attempt, really, he only ran the ball 20 or so times. Uh, he fumbled it once. So nothing, nothing too big, a long of five. Just a couple scrambles here and there. Both teams in the wild card. The Raiders will play the Bills and the Ravens will play the Titans. So we'll see if either of them make it through. And it looks like uh, just the Raiders did. So Radon continues to do something. That's their 12th win of the season. They will play the Steelers in the divisional round. And somehow they do it. 23 to 17. Radon takes his team one step closer to the Super Bowl. He didn't really pass well. 152 yards <laughs> on 14 or 28 attempts. So he threw 50%, but he did better than Big Ben. And I guess that's enough. Now the question is, did they win the AFC Championship? Will they play for a Super Bowl? No, they get beat by the Patriots. Was it at least a close game? Uh, no, not really. 34 to 13. To be fair, this is a pretty stacked Patriots team. Did he do okay is the real question. We got to be proud of him just for making it that far with a Raiders team that was down in the dumps uh, not too long ago. He didn't pass at all. Uh, Tyler Wilson comes in. I'm curious. Maybe Radon got hurt somewhere there or they just decided to bench him. Uh, seems like a weird situation to me. Ooh, okay. Well, that's what happened. I'm curious if that was in the divisional round or like at the start of the AFC championship, but Radon, who is maybe regressed to an 89 overall, probably because of the injury, uh, had a dislocated knee, so unable to play in that AFC championship game. Curious to know if the result would have been different, but, uh, the defense for the Raiders wasn't able to slow down the Patriots. Still, though, it's a good sign for him if he can lead his team to wins. He doesn't necessarily have to be the best quarterback as long as he can get that W at the end of the week. All right, I'm in the middle of uh, simming through the third season. <laughs> and freaking this middle linebacker from Oregon has won the Heisman. His name is Wolverine Justice. What a Chad name. And apparently, according to Ross Tucker, he is 10 times better than Manti Teow. So at the end of year three, uh, apparently sometime during this year, the Raiders have moved to Chicago to become the Cougars. So Chicago now has two NFL teams. Radon, not a good season for him. Uh, a 62.5 passer rating, only 2,300 yards. He threw 10 touchdowns and 14 picks. Uh, 52% with a, a long of 34, and uh, they, they did bad. I don't remember the record, but it's bad. He did get a decent amount of running, though. Two rushing touchdowns on the year, and 119. I think that's a career high uh, with no fumbles. So at least he could run the ball decently this season. Marquise also not having the best year. 50 catches for 612 yards, I guess, isn't terrible. An average of 12 yards per catch, and he had two touchdowns. Uh, a long of 61, though, so finally gets a decent long catch on his career. He only played 11 games, which to me means he probably was injured at some point. And that is actually exactly what happened. Not sure how long he was out for, but he broke his toe. So uh, he's still out just for a week. And Baltimore didn't have to play in the wild card, so a good season for them. And they actually win the divisional round against the Chiefs 31 to 23. And they'll be playing the Jaguars in the AFC Championship. Uh, they went 14 and 2 on the regular season, so Baltimore has to be the favorite at this point to win the Super Bowl. 
Uh, I mean, they're playing Jacksonville and on the other side coming out of the NFC is uh, the Redskins and the Giants. So you got to think that they're favored to win the Super Bowl and Marquise could get himself a ring and his broken toe should be healed up to play in that Super Bowl, but they have to beat the Jaguars first. Baltimore does end up winning the AFC Conference Championship game, so they'll be playing the Giants in the Super Bowl. And did Marquise make a difference? They win the Super Bowl. Marquise is a Super Bowl champion. 23-19. That is a close, close game. Let's take a look to see what he was able to do, if anything, in the receiving side. Uh, if he got any playing time, he is back. Uh, one reception for 16 yards. You know, he'll take that. At least he can say that he contributed and he has earned that Super Bowl ring that he's gotten. Maybe not the most impressive performance, but that's what you need. Three years into his career, he's got a Super Bowl win. The question is, can he continue to do that on his march towards the Hall of Fame? Let's see what happens at the end of year four. At the end of year four, neither the Ravens or the Cougars are making it into the playoffs, but Radon had arguably one of his best seasons so far. A 75.1 pass rating, he passed for 3,400 yards. 15 touchdowns to 14 interceptions isn't great, but he had a 69-yard line, so <laughs> nice. And then anything else, sacked 30 times is pretty brutal, and he passed it at 60%. That's pretty good for him. Uh, we've seen him down at the 50 mark, so I would say that he can't be too upset with a 60. Marquise kind of hopping back into the saddle this year. Uh, second most receptions on the team and also second most yards receiving. 57 catches for 720 yards and two touchdowns with a long of just 27. It's kind of impressive that he has not had a lot of just long bomb touchdowns knowing how fast he is, but... He played every game. He played a ton of downs. And he just continues to have a quiet career. He does already have a Super Bowl. Uh, but, I mean, imagine making the Super Bowl or winning the Super Bowl and then just missing the playoffs altogether the year after. At the end of Season 5, Radon is no longer the quarterback for the Cougars. He has actually been traded to the Dolphins uh, where they didn't make the playoffs. Uh believe it or not neither player made the playoffs once again pretty rough for them 72.6 passer rating for radon just 2100 yards uh i'm curious if this happened in the middle of the season or if he was injured a little bit because johnny lamanier has a couple of or a 700 yards so you think maybe radon could have had those but he had 14 touchdowns and 10 interceptions which is actually so far i think the best ratio for touchdowns to picks of his career Long of 55, and he threw it at 55%. Not crazy good, uh, but not his worst for sure. And Marquise is still with the Ravens, and he's had a career year. Leading the team in receptions and receiving yards. 81 catches for 1,056 yards uh, and five touchdowns to go along with that. Uh, again, not a crazy long, but I'm impressed. He's had himself a, a very solid season. At this point in their careers, Radon has dropped down to an 88 overall, which is still pretty solid. And Marquise is at an 82. So that's about where he was when he was drafted. So that's good news as long as you're not regressing. And I'm sure that this season definitely helped him in either gaining what he had lost or, or maintaining where he was at. Now, since we are five years into their careers, I figured we'd take a, a quick look to see where they're at and see what their career statistics look like at this point. So Radon through five years is averaging a 73.2 pass rating. He's got 14,592 passing yards, uh, 74 touchdowns to 64 interceptions. So uh, again, he would probably want that to be a little bit better than just 10 more, but things can happen if he just continues to have a, a solid couple of seasons or something you never know completion percentage just at a 57 which i don't think is terrible obviously not great but uh better than he's done on a lot of years alongside the passing he does have 523 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns and if we take a look at marquise uh 295 receptions for 3700 yards 
and 16 touchdowns. Ah, you know, it's not bad. He's not far off of uh, a lot of the other guys on his team. So he just needs to keep having seasons like he had this year and he could wind up looking pretty solid at the end of it. Of course, for both of our players, they need to start getting to the postseason. Uh, Radon has made it to a Super Bowl, right? And Marquise has won a Super Bowl. But besides those two seasons where they had success, they really haven't spent a whole lot of time in the postseason. The end of our guys' sixth season in the NFL has come. It was a decent one for Radon. Neither guy again makes the playoff. Uh, they need to be traded just to teams that can make the playoff. Of the, I mean, like, you put Radon in a decent enough team, he could probably get them to at least a wild card, but just struggling on the Dolphins. A 72.7 pass rating. He did have a lot of yards, 3,400. Uh, 16 touchdowns, but again, 14 interceptions. So just continuing the trend of just barely throwing more touchdowns. How about his uh, completion percentage? 55, lower than his career average, but better than we've seen at other times. Marquise has, uh, well, he's regressed a little bit. 50 catches for just 683 yards and two touchdowns this year, about half of what he did the year prior. Uh, did he have at least a young, long one? No, 27 yard or so. Just uh, a more pedestrian year for Marquise. Maybe he just needs to get a quarterback that's not Joe Flacco. I gotta say, year seven was a rough one for our guys. At first glance, you might think Radon had a good season. 125 passer rating. Uh, but the rookie to Marcus Aristotle, which is a fantastic name. Uh, he comes in. And he replaces Radon. So Radon rides the pine pretty much the whole season. Still three touchdowns, no interceptions. Statistically, it might be considered one of his career best seasons. Uh, but the guy, the rookie who just came in and took your spot, did a number. The team still didn't make the playoffs. And while Marquise had a decent year with the Ravens, unfortunately, the Ravens finished last in the NFL. 3 and 14, pretty rough. Uh, just three touchdowns for Marquise, but 57 catches for 816 yards, I guess isn't terrible. And I feel like that has kind of summed up both of our guys' careers so far. Not terrible. At the end of year eight, the Ravens still aren't good. They no longer have uh, Joe Flacco though. So a new quarterback to throw to Marquise and uh, it went okay. I mean, again, still not making the playoffs means they're not winning a lot of games, but 71 catches for Marquise for 838 yards, uh, four touchdowns there as well. Once again, not getting any long receptions. And well, some good news for Radon is that uh, he did make the playoffs. Uh, I'm not sure if he's happy about it though, because well, it was to Marcus Aristotle still leading the team and Radon on his few attempts that he did have didn't do so hot 133 yards and two interceptions on the season on just 11 attempts uh that's pretty rough i feel bad for the guy <laughs> his career's kind of plummeting right now i guess the one thing that radon has that to marcus aristotle doesn't is that he has won a playoff game uh dolphins did make it back to the wild card but get beaten by the broncos Things continue to look bleak for Radon at the end of year nine, as he actually did okay. Uh, pass rating looks good because it's 17 yards and a touchdown on just two attempts. So at least he made the most of what he was given. Uh, Aristotle didn't get him back to the playoffs though. So I don't know. I think it's time for him to go. He's obviously not good enough. The Ravens did end their playoff drought, but unfortunately for Marquise, uh, he got traded to the Chargers, and they did not make the playoffs. <laughs> Marquise, a decent season again. 53 catches, 722 yards, and a touchdown. But talk about bad luck for this guy. The year is 2023, and Tampa Bay has moved to London, which means now we have a team in the United Kingdom and in Mexico. So this is no longer the NFL. This is the IFL. And the Bulldogs even managed to uh, get a spot in the playoffs. The Chargers have made it to the playoffs, which is good news for uh, Marquise. But Marquise didn't 
catch a single pass on the entire year, which either means he was injured or benched. And I am tending to lean towards he was benched because he did return kicks and punts. Uh, he did an okay job of that. But after a decade in the league, it's looking pretty rough for him. Just can't seem to catch a break. Meanwhile, Radon has found himself uh, in a quarterback battle on the Ravens. He's been traded off of the Dolphins. I'm sure he's happy with that. And he's had an opportunity. Uh, it looks like he may be making the most of it. I don't know if he is starting in front of William Woodley now. Like, he got traded midway through the season. I don't know how that works, but... Uh, Ravens don't make the playoff, of course. The Ravens, they won their one Super Bowl and have been just at the bottom of the barrel since. But, considering he likely didn't play for a full season, 1,800 yards, 7 touchdowns to 4 interceptions, and Radon is seeing the field once again, so we're excited for him there. Since we are 10 years into this sim, let's see what these guys got going on. Radon averaging a 73.4 passer rating over his career for 20,000 yards. So averaging 2,000 yards a season. Uh, 101 touchdowns to 84 interceptions is starting to look a little bit more respectable. Uh, how about his completion percentage? 56? You would like to see that a little bit higher. But I guess he's doing okay. Nearing that 2,000 completion mark. Um, 148 games played. He's not had the most illustrious career, but he's had a career. Career-wise, Marquise leads the Chargers, uh, which is why it's kind of surprising that they didn't decide to throw to him at all. 526 catches over 10 years for 6,700 yards and 26 touchdowns. Averages almost 50 yards a game. He has his 142 games played. And then let's take a look at his kick and punt return. I don't know if he has a single one touchdown returning. No, that's not even him. Marquise, way down here. No touchdowns returning kicks on 266 attempts. But he has gotten 6,400 yards there. As long as just 36 yards returning punts. No touchdowns there either. A long of 12 yards. Uh, 482 punts returned for 2,300 yards. At this point in his career, Radon is an 86 overall quarterback. 31 years old and... Still doing okay. Uh, definitely should be starting over William Woodley, but he's not actually listed on the Ravens' depth chart. And that's because his old man bones have been injured. Unknown type of injury, out for zero weeks, on the IR. So who knows what happened to him? I'll let you guys decide. In fact, down in the comments, tell me what kind of injury has taken right on out. As for Marquise, bottom of the depth chart for the Chargers. Oh, and that's why he's a 69 overall. He has severely plummeted as he is, well, how old is he? Maybe it makes a little bit of sense. He is 33 years old. Four years older than the next oldest receiver on the roster. At the end of this 10 years, it was another wild card playoff loss for the Chargers and Marquise Jackson. And at this point, I'm curious to know how much longer our two guys have in the NFL. A quick look at legacy score shows that Radon is nowhere near the Hall of Fame. And Marquise actually has a chance. Uh, the legacy score is at an 847. I don't know what they need to get into the Hall of Fame, but he's got that Super Bowl win. And the I think it was an AFC championship as well. Um, and if we're just looking at all these wide receivers... You know, he's behind a lot of guys, but he's not behind as many as maybe you would expect. Scrolling down the list, though. Uh, 7,000 points is the lowest that I'm seeing for uh, a wide receiver on that Hall of Fame list. If we're looking at all Hall of Famers, though, you know, he's, what, a quarter of the way there? So it's theoretically possible, but uh, the Chargers are going to have to just start winning Super Bowl after Super Bowl, and Marquise is going to have to somehow step it up so at this point i'm gonna continue to sim uh but i'm gonna jump in either if one of the players has a really good season either individually or their team does really well or i'll jump in if one of them decides to retire and i'll tell you it is not quick to sim through seasons in madden 25 
So maybe for my efforts, you just scroll on down real quick and hit the like button. But otherwise, I'm just going to keep on going through the arduous task of simming through these years. And I'll pop back in when something interesting happens. Now, at the end of year 11, uh, our guys did nothing. But I did want to go through and see what happened to the rest of our players. Uh, nobody else is in the league, at least on a team, except for John Taylor, who is having a surprising career. Uh, five yearly awards. I'll have to figure out what those are. I'm not sure if we can figure it out, but I'll look. Uh, no Super Bowls or Conference Championships, but 4,600 as a legacy score is pretty good. I actually find it funny that uh, among all our players, he, he definitely serves a chance to make it into the Hall of Fame. Let's look at all Hall of Fame players. He has 4,600, which means he's in front of a couple of guys. Uh, obviously not nearly as impressive uh no super bowls or conference championships but those five yearly awards does look pretty impressive now just looking at the 2024 annual awards i would assume that most of what he's gotten is the best d line for the afc and he's a 91 overall unfortunately he is on the titan so it's not you know super useful for him but john taylor having himself a career yeah, so uh, looking into his stats and his awards, it just shows best defensive lineman. It doesn't say what year or how many. So I think it's safe to assume that he just managed to get that five different years. Not the most impressive award, but for a defensive lineman, there's not a whole lot of options for awards to pick up. So uh, for a third round pick, that's pretty impressive 11 years in. Well, it's the end of year 12 now. And I guess it's almost the end of the video. We are in the transaction log. If I go to the retired players, you wouldn't believe it, but a lot of guys are retiring. Durham Finch is retired. He was with the Giants, and actually they just won a Super Bowl. So Durham Finch retires a Super Bowl champion. David Williams, who apparently at one point was on the Chargers, has retired. I'm fairly certain he did almost nothing with his career. Marquise Jackson, also on the Chargers, has retired. Uh, just again with that one Super Bowl win. John Taylor has retired. Kale Mackey has retired. And Radon Randell has retired. David Williams uh, ends with zero as his legacy score. I'm fairly certain he really didn't do anything. For Radon, it's just a 40 on the legacy score. He had a much better career. In fact, he had a career. Uh, he just never could do anything of note. Marquise ends it in 847. Again, with just that one Super Bowl win and the one conference championship. Uh, not a crazy career for him. In fact, I feel like I would say that Radon had a better career than Marquise. But Marquise, you know, he won a Super Bowl. John Taylor improved. Uh, once again, he got another yearly award. And ends with a 59-33 legacy score. I'm not certain it's going to be enough to get him to, into the Hall of Fame. I would say it probably isn't just because he didn't have a lot of postseason success. But just based off of this legacy score, John Taylor was the most successful T.O. boy in this NFL class. For Durham Finch, again, he won that Super Bowl. And apparently he made it to two Super Bowls, but just a 379 on the legacy score, which to me means... Probably didn't contribute much throughout his career. And Kale Mackey, uh, who's been playing for Mexico, just with the eight legacy scores. So, again, not that impressive. And you kind of got a feel for him. Unfortunately, the way this game works, we can't actually look at the stats of our players after they're retired. So I'm kind of just crossing my fingers and hoping that I didn't save uh, and that we can kind of just back out and take a look. Fortunately, I was able to do just that. Now, we are missing uh, that final 12th year for some of these guys, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Let's take a look at Radon and Marquise first. Radon ends, again, 11 years of experience with a 70.8 passer rating. He threw for a total of 23,862 yards, passed for 117 touchdowns, and threw 114 interceptions. Uh, and I don't think he was that accurate over his career. Just 55%, which is nothing too spectacular playing in 164 games. 
Now, attempts will have to be factored out of this because of sacks and whatnot, but rushing-wise for Radon Randall, 368 carries for just 890 yards, which to me means uh, the teams that he played for did not utilize the speed that he had. Three rushing touchdowns for the guy and only three fumbles, which is not too bad. Uh, no, uh, no long runs. His longest run was just six yards, so... Uh, truly, uh, just kind of got screwed out of using his skill set. At the end, though, a very decently mediocre career. He saw some success in the postseason early, but then just couldn't replicate it and couldn't be surrounded by enough talent to uh, help hide some of his flaws passing. Marquise Jackson retires with 526 receptions and 6,760 yards gained uh, with 26 touchdowns. He never had any sort of crazy seasons, but he was decently consistent. Um, you know, every once in a while, he'd have an outlier year, either good or bad, but for the most part, it was just everything. And again, compared to what you saw from him in college, you would have expected something more than this, but just a long of 61 in his 158 games played. Certainly, he would have liked to have done better than that. And then kick returns and punt returns. Uh, I don't think he ever scored. 301 kick returns for 7,200 yards, but no touchdowns and just a long of 36. So he's got to be so disappointed about that. And then returning punts, 482 of those for 2,300 yards and no touchdowns and just a long of 12. It really sucks that these guys kind of struggled in the NFL because... Well, we thought they were going to be phenomenal. For John Taylor, he will leave the NFL with 407 tackles, 156 for loss, and 77 sacks. That's a lot of sacks for 11 years. No interceptions, uh, which is kind of a shame. He did have two pass deflections uh, in three forced fumbles and one fumble recovery. Nothing incredible except a blocked kick. That's impressive. No defensive touchdowns, but the blocked kick for a guy of his size, I mean, six foot one, 315 pounds, that might be the most impressive stat that he had. For Kale Mackey, he didn't really have a whole lot of opportunities, uh, especially late into his career in and out of the league. Um, I mean, he had one total sack. He had three tackles for loss. He did have an interception a couple of years ago in 2021 uh, in a 45-yard return. Did he score? Did he take it to the house? Um, touchdowns? No. Uh, but he also forced a fumble and recovered a fumble in his uh, rookie season. So he had a little bit that he could do, um, but just never really given a shot, never found a spot on a roster and ends with a disappointing career. For David Williams, he has been on rosters pretty much his entire career, but only saw anything his rookie season. He did have a decent year, 3,100 yards, 16 touchdowns, 16 interceptions, uh, but just, again, wasn't given the opportunity after that first year. So, you know, he's probably made a solid chunk of money, but just uh, not an impressive career. Durham Finch ends his career with 204 total tackles, 67 for loss, and 33 sacks, which honestly is not all that bad. Uh, he just, again, though, wasn't really given opportunities. He had a forced fumble, no blocked kick, but he did get a safety. So um, our defensive players, you know, they did okay. They just uh, weren't put in the right spots and maybe couldn't make a big enough impact to stay on rosters in meaningful roles. So we now know what happened to every player. I guess except for Malcolm Williams, he did go undrafted, and it seems like he's been out of the league a little bit longer, but just so interesting uh, that all five, all six of the other guys decided to retire the exact same year. There was not a lot of success combined between the players, but it just goes to show that success in college does not necessarily lead to success in the NFL. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a bit of a one-off, but something fun to look at. And it's just a shame that our guys couldn't be a little bit better. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to hit the like button. 
Uh, if for no other reason other than it took me just so many hours to sim through this many seasons in Madden 25. It's just not a very uh, streamlined game for simming through multiple seasons. After you've done that, though, you can go ahead and hit subscribe if you want to be notified when new videos get posted. And then scroll down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the goons. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.